Hello folks, LK back on here with another video game playthrough with live commentary. Today's game is the brand new Godzilla game for the PlayStation 4. I'm an old school Godzilla fan from back in the day, so it didn't take me long to pick this one up. Um, actually, I got it the day it came out. Wasn't able to get uh, acquainted with it right away, but um, now that I've had some time to sit back and play through it a couple of times, um, get uh, Godzilla maxed out on his abilities. Figured it was a good time to get on here and uh, share my take and uh, the things I like about the game, things I don't like. And the first thing to talk about is this right here. I love the fact that they have incorporated so many things from uh, 1984 version Godzilla into this game. Although they actually refer to him as 89 Godzilla from uh, Godzilla vs. Biolanti, um, that's still the same roar from uh, 84's Return of Godzilla, which is better known in the States over here as Godzilla 1985. Everything from uh, the roar to uh, the way his body looks, his movements, um, the way uh, the sound effects when uh, his feet hit the ground, um, just a really cool throwback to the 80s. As we got big, ugly Hollywood Godzilla here. About to go head to head with the OG. Not going to end well for him, I can promise you that. <laughs> Don't believe me, stay tuned. But this is Godzilla the video game. And without wasting any more time, we're going to jump right in here and get started. And we'll do God of Destruction here, do a, a good run through this. And we're going to start anew as Godzilla. And I'm going to go with the normal atomic breath. I like that much better than uh, the spiral or the, the old school throwback vapor looking breath. Um, just my personal take. I, I love the 80s version of Godzilla. Pretty much everything about him. Uh, when I was a kid, Godzilla 1985 was my absolute favorite Godzilla movie. Uh, above all, all the verse movies, you know, even including King Kong vs. Godzilla. All the fun stuff that, uh, that we grew up loving as, as kids. 1985 was always my movie. Now, granted, this was before um, that I ever was fortunate enough to catch the original film. Uh, Gojira from 1954 and I'm gonna skip the dialogue here that these people really get on my nerves especially old girl who's always popping in and annoying the hell out of me and I bypassed a lot of the uh, well I bypassed getting 100% destruction on this stage because I want to show you Jet Jaguar here one of the things that I've picked up is a little bit of confusion on how to get him to appear you can get him to show up on the very first stage here if you have at least 50% destruction and you go straight for the generator as soon as you achieve it. A robot? And he will show up. Someone must have created it to stop Godzilla. And if you defeat him three times on the same run through of uh, God of Destruction mode, you get a trophy for that. Uh, and you also get to watch the cutscene where they're shaking hands, uh, reminiscent of uh, Godzilla vs. Megalon, where the two characters originally met. And we gotta go ahead and smack him around here and defeat him hate to do that since he's uh, such a nice fellow, but it's either him or me. And yeah, we don't, uh, all the friends go out the window now. He is fair game. You know, I really hate it when he does that. Just kind of delays the inevitable, but whatever. But I've read a lot of people say, you know, hey, I've tried this on level one. I can't get him to show up. I can only show you what I'm doing. Uh, it works for me every single time. I've not had a problem getting him to appear on this stage. Um, now, there was some confusion on how to get him to appear on some of the later stages um, where he would normally um, even be advertised to show up. You'll see his picture as uh, the kaiju that you're going to face on that level, but he never appears. And on those levels, really, it's the exact same formula as you follow here. Um, you just want to get at least 50% destruction and go after the generators as quickly as you possibly can. And uh, once again, I, I haven't had any problems getting it to work on the later stages either. So uh, it does work. Now, one thing I can tell you that, um, that might be the problem for some of you, 
once you unlock him and you beat him, you get his uh, circuit boards and, and whatnot. Um, you actually want to go into um, the uh, evolution stage and uh, unlock him. Once you actually unlock him, you shouldn't have any issues whatsoever getting him to appear on any of those stages where you see his picture. Uh, that may be one thing that people are accidentally overlooking. Actually, I didn't know it either until I gave it a shot. I'm like, hey, guess you had to unlock him first. I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to get 100% here before I uh, finish him off. And the reason for that, the more often you get 100% destruction rate, um, the better chance you have of getting him to grow to over 100 meters. And when you get him to grow to over 100 meters, you can access that final uh, level of the game where you get to play as Burning Godzilla. And I'm going to have to take you out here, buddy. As soon as I get up. <laughs> Why do you always try to get behind people? <laughs> a lot of the reviews that I've read on the game have have been none too kind. Uh, a lot of people bash it, saying that you know the gameplay is just so outdated and the graphics are not really all that great. I disagree about the graphics. I mean, I, I think the monsters are uh, are really well done and, and uh, their mannerisms, all their nuances and special abilities. I think they're all well represented. If there's one thing that uh, that I wish they would have made better, honestly. It's uh, when you blow up stuff, like the ship right here, these buildings that we're getting ready to blow up. I wish they would have put a lot more detail into the buildings when they're falling apart. As you can see here, the buildings are kind of like, I don't know, kind of like firecrackers or something. You hit them, they flash, and then they just kind of pop. And then they're gone. I don't know, I wish they would have... Uh, Added a little bit more uh, detail, you know, kind of like the game Rampage, if you guys remember that. Where you actually get to, you know, hear the concrete break in and you see pieces of it falling away instead of just these little sparkler effects here. Yeah, I really wish they would have put a little bit more into that. But hey, you know, it's, uh, it's still a really good game for diehard Godzilla fans. I mean, obviously it's not going to please everyone. Uh, because the game is not intended for everyone. And this is a specific game targeting a specific audience, and me as a hardcore Godzilla fan from back in the day, I'm pleased with it. You know, obviously it's uh, it's not the greatest game ever made, but as far as it being a Godzilla game, thinking about where we've come from over the years, um, especially, you know, the, the Godzilla games back in the past, which, personally, the, the one on the old school Nintendo, I was a big fan of that one. Uh, even the second one, uh, the one where you actually become, you know, the, uh, the military and you're trying to stop uh, not only Godzilla but the other monsters as well. Um, yeah, I was a big fan of that game. The only one that I, I pretty much despised was the uh, one for the original Game Boy, that damn puzzle game. Where you're lost in the Matrix, or whatever they call it, and uh, you're looking for Godzilla's son, who in that game is referred to as Manila instead of Minya, um, how we know him from the films. But uh, yeah, I never did finish that game. <laughs> Little Manila, he uh, he never did get rescued. I uh, I played it and, uh, and really tried to give it a chance, and uh, oh, I, I just just couldn't get into it. A couple of the cutscenes were probably the most uh, entertaining aspect of the entire thing. Just didn't really care for it. Now I did enjoy the uh, Super Godzilla uh, simulation game for uh, the Super Nintendo from back in the day. Uh, I thought that game, at least for its time, was, uh, was well done. And uh, again, for Godzilla fans, it was very amusing. I used to play it quite a bit. It was really cool that, you know, for for American audiences, we uh, we got our first glimpse of uh, what would become Space Godzilla in that game. When you turn into Super Godzilla toward the end, if you're fortunate enough to, to do everything it's telling you to do, uh, you get a chance to turn into him at the end of the game and really unlock some power. And they took that design and 
pretty much created the Space Godzilla character with it. And not really a big fan of that particular kaiju. Honestly, not really a big fan of the word kaiju, to be honest. I didn't start hearing that until uh, seemingly a few years ago. Never did hear the term growing up. I'm not sure when it became such a, a normal part of the Godzilla culture. I prefer to monsters as kaijus, but hey, whatever. But yeah, the Space Godzilla character I was never too, uh, too big on. Wasn't really crazy about the story. Um, but, uh, you yeah, know, it's all good. Got more than enough monsters to go around in this world. This uh, Godzilla universe that they've created. One of the points I would like to make to the people that say the, the gameplay feels dated. You know, they could tell when they watched the trailer, you know, some of the demos out there that it was just going to be a very blocky, kind of clunky uh, type of a playthrough. And once again, yeah, there are portions of it that are like that. But I tell you, one of the things about it that I really love is that this game, to me, when I play it, it feels like an old arcade game. Like, it really has that kind of feel to it. Which, you know, somebody in my age demographic can really, truly appreciate. And, you know, obviously, if you're, uh, if you're young enough to wear your idea of an old-school video game console is like a PlayStation 2 or a GameCube or, or even a Wii or something like that, you're not really going to be able to relate to what I'm talking about. Us uh, old farts who have been around a little bit longer, people in their uh, early to mid-30s and beyond, those of us who used to spend all kinds of money at the arcade, we definitely understand what it feels like to, to play one of those old games. And this game has that kind of feel to it, and, and like I said, I, I really enjoy that. Okay, here's one of the stages where you can get Jet Jaguar to appear again. So we'll go ahead and go into this, and I'll show it to you. Basically going to do the exact same routine we did on the first stage. We're going to achieve 50% destruction as quickly as we can, and go straight for those generators. All right, and your clue that Jet Jaguar is about to show up is after you destroy that last generator, if you still have control over him and you can move him, you know he's coming. Not only that, I mean, of course, they talk about it, but if you notice a split second later after that last generator goes down that you can still move him, then you've done everything correctly and he's going to show up. We'll call it Jet Jaguar. Yeah, sure, let's. That makes a lot of sense. He looks just like a Jaguar and all. I don't know, it may just be me, but from a distance, that damn smile reminds me of Leatherface. I mean, look at him. Give him a chainsaw and an apron. Oh, yeah. That's some creepy stuff right there. <laughs> Alright, that's far enough, my friend. And that's it. I should have went ahead and got 100% destruction, but... Eh... We got plenty more opportunities for that. Don't think I'm gonna have any trouble getting him over 100 meters. Cause I definitely want to get to the burning Godzilla stage. It's really cool to control him and battle Hollywood Lizard. Okay, I think at this point I want to drop down to area 12 because I think it's stage 16 is the next place the Jet Jaguar shows up. So let's start heading that way. Yeah, yeah. One goofy overpaid politician for another. No surprises there. We have movement in the area. It's Godzilla. How did we let it reach this far inland? I don't think there's a whole lot you can do about it, lady. While we're on the subject of uh, Hollywood Godzilla, kind of alluded to him a second ago. Go ahead and give my opinion on that while we're on the topic. Um, you know, I've seen where a lot of fans loved it, and quite a few hated it for different reasons. The most common complaint that I come across is uh, most people are unhappy that it took Godzilla so long to show up in the film. And while I do echo that sentiment, um, I, I honestly I think it was very effective that they waited. What I think it was almost right at the hour mark uh, where he showed up in Hawaii. There, where you got a really good look at him, where it pans up from his feet. <laughs> Breaking away from that topic, I love the fact that they've got the uh, the hotel in here with. <laughs> With Godzilla's head on it. It seems like I just read about that a couple of months ago, and uh, 
they uh, they were on it, man, when they went ahead and threw it in the game here. Awesome. And there's Super Godzilla from Super Nintendo. Those of you that remember that, we talked about it earlier. But back on topic here, the uh, Hollywood Godzilla. Um, I do think it was effective that they waited about an hour to really put him on the screen the first time. What I didn't like was after the final, when you finally uh, see him, when they finally got to the reveal, he pretty much disappeared again. And still, only, you know, here and there you get glimpses of him until, you know, the fight at the end. Um, that part I, I wasn't really happy with, but really, honestly, my main gripe about that film, there was just too many Hollywood elements in it. Um, I, I really couldn't have cared less about the characters. They've raised the disaster level on us. Hear that old music? Very cool touch. I love that. But um, on the Hollywood Godzilla, I uh, I really couldn't have cared less if the main character got back to his family or not. They just didn't really do a good job in, in making me really give a crap about all that. And then when they finally do get back together at the end, I'm like, big deal. I mean, you know. And then the whole uh, Godzilla, the savior of our city. I'm one of those Godzilla purists that, I, as I was talking about earlier, I really feel that... Uh, that he should be treated as the natural disaster that he is. Uh, in a sense, Batty Godzilla, as most people like to refer to him. I'm a bigger fan of that version of him than I am the, uh, the kid-friendly Godzilla. Like I said, in the, the 60s and 70s versus films, you know, most of the time when uh, he shows up, you know, there's always some kid running around like, Yay, Godzilla, hello! He's come to save us. Uh, no, no, he's come to fuck your shit all up. <laughs> and you better run for your life, or you're not gonna live to talk about it. To me, that's Godzilla. Always has been, always will be, at least in my mind. So, when, uh, you know, they made him out to be good guy Godzilla, I don't know. I wasn't, uh, the biggest fan of that. But, good things about the movie. It easily, and I mean easily, trumps that 1998 atrocity that we got here in the States. Iguanazilla, as I like to refer to him as. Had nothing to do with, uh, with the real Godzilla, of course. And the new one, um, you know, at least he was a, a bit more akin to the classic Godzilla look. I, I still think he was a little bit too, uh... He guanted out, um, like with his head and, and things like that. I don't know. It still kind of reminded me of the 98 version a little bit. Um, but at least he had Godzilla's signature traits, his roar, the dorsal fins on his back, and of course, uh, his atomic breath. There was a moment in that new movie where I was really wondering if we were going to see that or not. And, um, you know, and then there's that moment where you see the dorsal fins start to, start to glow blue and then... The fanboy came out of me in the in the theater at that point. I knew we were getting ready to see something get blown up. But overall, it was uh, it was a cool thing because you know, at least it gave Godzilla fans in this uh, country hope that maybe you know our filmmakers over here could uh, could maybe get it right if they tried. Again, I wasn't a big fan of of his look and the fact that uh, he was all CGI'd out, but. Compared to 1998, uh, it was a godsend, so can't complain about it too, too much. I'm curious to see what they do with the sequel and uh, what other monsters they bring in from, uh, from the classic days. Wouldn't be surprised if we see Ghidra show up. Yes, I said Ghidra, not King Ghidorah. <laughs> the uh, original movie to feature him in the States was Ghidra, the three-headed monster. If I had to guess, I would say that that's probably an American flub. They probably translated it wrong. Probably spelled it incorrectly. And then uh, the uh, English voiceover actors uh, actually referred to him as Ghidra, not Ghidorah. So I guess for me, the fact that I, I that was the first time I ever saw that character, to me that's always been how I refer to him, whether it's right or wrong. That's just me. And if you really pay attention to the generators here and these uh, rotating sections, that's really where you'll notice Godzilla getting bigger as the game goes on. When you very first start on uh, stage one, I mean, his head barely comes up above that uh, second rotating disc there. And 
now he's about above the third line. And toward the end of the game, he's he's uh, about almost looking over the top of that thing. So you will see him get bigger as the game goes on. Um, I've read some people make the comment that he's supposedly growing, but they can't tell. Um, that's a good way to measure just how big he's getting. Just watch those, uh, those generator lines. Now we're up to 80 meters. That's good. Where is Godzilla heading? Okay, area 16. Here's Jet Jaguar for the third time. Alrighty. No point wasting any time here. <laughs> oh. Okay, I know it's iconic. I know it's a classic thing that, that Godzilla does. It's been uh, uh, widely loved in the series, but why'd they have to put it in the game? Wee! <laughs> Wee! <laughs> That's just not something that I picture 80s Godzilla doing. 70s Godzilla where he's, you know, the, the happy lizard who shows up to kids' birthday parties and smacks around the school bully. Sure, I, I get that, but uh, this version of Godzilla, he just doesn't need to be doing that. My opinion, of course. I'm sure there's a lot of people who probably disagree and will call me out in the comments. That's okay. That's just how I feel. Yes, I am button mashing right now. Again, this is a huge uh, arcade element for me. And we're good to go. Should be showing up here. Godzilla's looking for him. Where you at, punk? Happy days are here again. And guess what? I have got three full atomic breath gauges for you. Ooh, a little bigger there, I see. I don't know if I remember that from before. Well, Godzilla better not be messing around too much here. Ooh. <laughs> Disruptor. Thanks for playing, Jet. Should show us the cutscene here. <laughs> Is Jet Jaguar shaking hands with Godzilla? What on earth happened between those two? <laughs> they used to kick it in the hood together. And there you go. <laughs> and that's the Jet Jaguar saga on this game. Moving on. And then, of course, you have this monochrome film filter that kind of takes things back to the, the 50s here. Even though it's not the original Godzilla from the first film, this one is more reminiscent of uh, the one from Godzilla vs. Mothra, which I guess is why they call him Godzilla 64 instead of 54. But at any rate, it's really cool. It's a, it's a really nice throwback if you have appreciation for the classic films. Looks really, uh, really grainy and just an old school experience. But 64 Godzilla, I don't know, to me, he leaves quite a bit to be desired, especially after you've played with uh, the newer versions. He's uh, slow, lumbering. His atomic breath is not nearly as effective. I know that's, you know, the point of uh, part of the appeal and such, but... In a video game setting, when you go from the, the newer versions and uh, how much more action that you see down to this, yeah, it does quite tend to leave quite a bit to be desired. I mean, that, that atomic vapor there, that almost powdery kind of look, it's just not nearly as strong as uh, the uh, white, bluish beam that we see in uh, the later incarnations. I mean, once again, all we've got left is that lower spinning disc here on this generator, and I've hit it with two atomic breaths now, and still nothing. God, it takes forever to recharge. Maybe this one. 
Wow. Alright, we're gonna have to go with the old tail swipe here, I guess. <laughs> and still, what does Godzilla have to do to knock this thing down? One more. Holy Jesus. Now I'm just curious. Will another one at full power do the job? Holy shit. <laughs> oh my goodness. Finally. Oh. I can't imagine playing through this entire game as 64 Godzilla, I just can't do it. <laughs> but at any rate, there's a look at it if you haven't seen it. Um, the monochrome film filter is really cool, 64 Godzilla not so much. If you're going to play through on this level, I'd highly recommend going with 89 Godzilla or perhaps the burning version, or really anybody else would work wonders. I don't have the confidence that even after you power up this version of Godzilla that he's really going to be that aesthetically pleasing. But there it is at any rate, and now we're going to switch back to the modern era. Yeah, when the older monsters start showing up and uh, you get into those fights with them, man, it really takes me back to uh, the days of growing up when I'd watch those first movies. Tell you, there was a uh, few more entertaining things on the weekend than uh, Super Scary Saturday on TBS with Grandpa and... Uh, there'd be a Godzilla movie on, typically him fighting another monster. And uh, as a kid, I tell you, it just didn't get much more entertaining than that. That made for a good weekend if I got my Godzilla fix on a Saturday. I got exposed to the Super X2 for the first time from Godzilla Part 2, War of the Monsters, on the NES. I uh, didn't even know the Super X2 existed until uh, I ran across it in that game. Because I, I played the game... I think a little bit before I saw the movie Godzilla vs. Biolanti, so I, I did not know that it was based on, you know, something that had actually been in the movies. And I thought, hey, what a what a cool thing there they're doing, where, um, you know, it can actually uh, absorb his atomic breath, magnify it, and then shoot it back at him, like, you know, a thousand times stronger, or whatever it's supposed to be. And I remember you could actually do that on that game, and that was a cool way to fight him and, and uh, deplete his energy. Of course, it looks a little bit more realistic on here. There we go. <laughs> uh, why does every monster have to sound like Rodan? That's a valid question for uh, Toho. That uh, roar of, of uh, Ghidra's Ghidorah, whatever you want to call him, uh, was not the original roar that he had. Um, in that first movie, he sounded very different. Not sure at what point they uh, redid Rodan's roar and stuck that on him. And the same thing for Batra. Batra sounds just like Rodan. And... Ghidra does end up showing up in the uh, American Godzilla sequel. It will be very interesting to see exactly how they screw him all up as far as what he looks like and, and all that. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, let's attack the wrong monster there. buildings here before I take them out. Let's see. And what else? 
else do we got? Probably this crap in the middle of the town over here, yep. Stuff usually always remains standing toward the end. Alright, now we're over 100. Interesting, they give him the old roar from uh, the 60s here when he becomes Burning Godzilla. Godzilla's body temperature is rising fast. The only Which I guess that's what he had in the movie, but you're still technically 89 Godzilla, just jacked up on nuclear heroin here or whatever. <laughs> I remember this being a really cool moment first time I saw it. No. There can't be another Godzilla. Ninth squad, begin your assault. All right. Let's get it on. Atomic ray, you have. Let me show you mine. Yeah, he doesn't like too much of that. I hate it when I accidentally do that. Quickly enough. There we go. Godzilla has gone down. Well, at least he hung around the box office a little bit longer than his 98 counterpart. And that's it. <laughs> well, we'll go ahead and stick with the ending here. Why didn't y'all just do that in the very beginning? <laughs> as soon as he popped up out of the water in the first stage. Look at all the trouble you could have saved. Now all we have to do is find a freezer big enough to fit him in. Kiryu has reached the northern sea. Godzilla's temperature and Kiryu's stability are at optimum levels. Descending to destination on seabed now, ma'am. Like what a brilliant idea. Weapon did its job. Godzilla and Kiryu are in the sea and descending. We have lost Godzilla's signal, ma'am. The mission is a success. All I have done is delayed the inevitable. We throw <laughs> 60 years worth of bad karma back into the ocean. Okay, I can't take any more of this. <laughs> oh, the voiceover in this game kills me. It's about as bad as the actual movies. But, uh, yeah, I, I enjoy this game. 
and uh, you know I, I don't agree with a lot of the bad reviews that I've seen on it. Um, people who were expecting the best game ever, of course, you know your expectations were were a little bit too high. Um, if you're a hardcore Godzilla fan, as I said earlier, I really think you'll enjoy this game. Um, this uh, fan base is exactly who it's intended for. And uh, for what they had to work with, I, I think they did a pretty good job. Uh, obviously, some things could have been better, sure. But uh, all in all, I'm happy with the game. Um, it's, uh, it's good old-fashioned monster fun. When the mood strikes, it's cool to rampage through the towns, fight these other monsters. I don't know if I'll pursue the uh, Platinum Trophy to the end. I, I don't know if I have that kind of time. But, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. I give it uh, a thumbs up for Godzilla fans. Uh, if you haven't checked it out yet, I would definitely give it a go. If you're not sure about it, rent it. If you can find it hanging around in a red box or something like that, give it a try and uh, see what you think. Leave your opinions in the comments. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care. And if you really think the new game's bad, I dare you to sit down and play the original Game Boy game for an hour. No, really. I double dog dare you.